All right. So, and we are going to also pick it up on uh, YouTube. So we will begin here shortly. Uh, we're still just doing some little housekeeping stuff and still allowing some folks in. So uh, bear with us. All right, uh, I think we're ready to roll. Uh, Ademora, go ahead. I think you have a question. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, my question is about the income sharing that we got on the email. Okay. So uh, it's about the upfront payment. I was gonna ask if there is a way, uh, is it possible for us to make like uh, installment, maybe two installment payments on those uh, up upfront payments? Yeah, uh, so we just had it today and we sent it out. So uh, like that, that I, think, I, I don't really think that should be a problem. Uh, we can talk about that one uh, later on, but like that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> But the uh, reason why it took so long, I think we announced it a while ago. The reason why it took so long was we were going back and forth on uh, the terms of it with our partners, right? We wanted something, you know, uh, that was going to be very beneficial. Uh, still, this is still beneficial, but we wanted something uh, that was going to give more, you know, to the students. And they are also doing business, so they are also looking at business. So we had to balance it out. Uh, but I think now we go to a really, you know, good spot. So uh, it is a, like a really good program that is going to help everybody who doesn't have the upfront money, like that whole entire sum, right? Uh, Isaiah, go ahead. Thank you. Go good on. evening, guys. Hi, Dr. Dildo. Good question. Um, will we get a list of what programs will work with that same um email that actually went out will it be have a list because i know you have a lot of different um options and a lot of different programs out there okay so uh actually when you go to the link for the income sharing it's only three programs that are on there so those are the only ones that you can use it for All right so it's for you. the entry level i think it's for the entry level and then for the pci uh expert and for the pci specialist so those are the two that we are the three that we are pushing out with this program for the time being. Great to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Julius, go ahead. Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, nice to be part of the call. Uh, I am calling from Canada. So I have, my question is two dimensional. So briefly, uh, I just wanted to find out from you if uh, how your program works with those in Canada, if you have, if, if at all you, 
you're receiving or you're training uh, cybersecurity experts who work in Canada with Canadian companies. And, uh, and, then, and if you have had any success stories, that's number one. And then number two, when I saw the, because I've really been following you a lot, I've read, I've gone through all the videos, I've been living, you know, on your website all the time. So I was very surprised when I got, a few minutes ago, I got the information about the, inform the uh, income sharing uh, program. So, so the question would be, I know Canada and America, they're almost like one people. So it, it doesn't apply to us in Canada who yes, will be interested I, in signing up. Yeah. So uh, mostly with the financial uh, institutions, you know, like where they work or the uh, jurisdiction is uh, sometimes a bit funny, but I think Canada will qualify. Just fill out the application and see uh, if it's like if Canada doesn't qualify, it's not going to allow you to proceed. Right. So like it's very easy to find out. Yes. Try like you are uh, going to, even if you are not, like you are not going to finish the application. Uh, yes. If it is not going to allow, Canada is not going to allow you to go to the next step. So you can give it a shot. Okay, my first part of the question then. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I was wondering if uh, you have been training people here. Oh, okay. So with Canada, uh, mostly we have Eric. Uh, Eric has been repping Canada for a while. Uh, I don't think Eric has logged in yet. Yes, but uh, all our training is done remotely. So yes, I am. I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, our training is done remotely. Uh, Eric is based in Canada. Uh, he took uh, our training. He's coming back for PCI uh, here shortly. But yes, uh, it's very doable. You can take it. You know, anyway. Okay. We have, we've been have students from uh, Africa. We have uh, fifteen or twelve students from uh, ADDI sponsored them. Uh, wow. I think three of them got jobs in their home countries, like Malawi, Cameroon. The other one, I don't really remember. I think Namibia. Wow. So, Uganda. So, Uganda. 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 Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Isaac. Uganda. I, Isaac remembers. That. Yeah. So. So just to confirm, thank you for 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 the explanation. Just to confirm, so the PS the the PCI uh, expert program it, it embodies the, the the first part, right? The the so, so it embodies the uh, the specialist part, or is just it's separate? Uh, so the PCI DSS, we have two programs running. We have the expert and we have the specialist, right? Now the as expert covers everything within the specialist, and then that's that. That was my my question. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. So, is it possible for me to get Eric's Eric's contact or like to talk with him? Oh yeah, yeah, put it in the chat. Yes. I mean, you can message him directly uh, on here. Okay, okay, yes. okay. okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're cool. welcome. All right, everyone. I uh, appreciate everybody's time. We are starting here shortly. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, they can bring it up before we we uh, move forward. All right, uh, DJ Black, please go ahead. I think you are muted. Uh, please, you have your name as DJ, like your hand is up, uh, but you are muted. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, uh, I'm based in Germany. I'm originally from Cameroon, and uh, I'm interested in, I've already gone through the entry-level introduction, and I just wanted to know if there will be any issues for me um, attending the training from Germany. Uh, no, there wouldn't. Uh, we have students from uh, Sweden, from, I think we have one from Austria, uh, Netherlands. We've had a student from Netherlands, and so like it don't be a problem, uh, frankly. All right, thank you. That was my only question. Okay, thank you. Uh, second hand up is uh, Tijuana, if I got it right. Thank Hi, you. it's Tijuana. How are you? Thank you. Tijuana. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay, um, so I'm traveling uh, uh, April 17th through May 7th um, mm -hmm. between Morocco and Spain and Portugal. Oh, I'd like um, to like Say it again. Like to be in your bag. <laughs> it's well overdue. <laughs> um, so timeline for the expert, uh, PCI expert. Um, and then 
timeline for that and then um, the sessions with your cohort, is it Saturdays? Uh, so for the next cohort, it's gonna be on Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesdays and uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, Tuesdays and Thursdays. 7 p.m. Eastern. 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay, I have to do that math. And then um, what are the dates? Uh, like when is it starting or then? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, so uh, I think 18th April is when tentatively is when we'll be starting the new cohort for the PCI. For 18th. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, but, but before then, once you enroll, you have access to the online version, so you can start studying. Uh, and also, that also helps if you miss a class, although we're going to have the class recording, but you can always keep up or get ahead of the class, even before uh, we meet for the live session. Got it. And then as the cohorts, do we um, determine the best date for us to meet for our group projects, or is that set? No, that will be for you and your cohort. Okay, got it. Thanks so much. Uh, Vin, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Do it's Vincent here. <clears throat> Vincent. Okay. Uh, yeah, real real quick. Um, if you've already made payments for the PCI, the SPOT classes, you know I'm enrolled in that. If you already made some parts of the payment and you still want to use those program how does that happen like do you have to like do you get a refund and then re-enroll or do they take what you've already paid and just add it to the lump sum uh so i mean we can talk offline on that but i think it was okay applying uh whatever you've made to the license and then that's it for the deposit okay all right thank you yes you're welcome thanks all right everyone so uh we'll be kicking it off here uh Today we are we will be talking about the secret to landing a six-figure cybersecurity job, uh, but we will you know uh, talk about a lot of other stuff, uh, all pointing to the secret, right? So uh, we will get to know the secret at the end of the whole presentation. Oh, thank you, George, uh, for your kind comments. All right, everyone. So. Uh, we are starting time now. We are also streaming live on YouTube. So uh, you can get us on YouTube. And you are welcome to Cyber Chats if this is your first time. Uh, we do this every Friday. And we encourage you to be part of uh, Cyber Chats because always you are going to learn something new. Uh, we promised you that you are going to learn something new. And your time here is not going to be wasted. So we are officially starting. Uh, we have to address some questions. And before we, before I forget, right, uh, we'll be starting. Uh, I mean, spring has started already. Uh, Easter is coming up. Uh, we'll be doing some giveaways. At least we will do two PCI and uh, two entry-level courses. Next week during Cyber Chat is when uh, we'll be doing the giveaway. If for most of our folks who've been uh, part of the Cyber Chat for a while in October, I think we gave almost like 30,000 plus of courses, right? There was a whole list, 10 people, uh, different variety and people got, uh, I think some people still haven't claimed their, uh, their, their uh, vouchers for certification exams that they, they won, right? And all that is still there for them to take and people got enrolled in the entry level and other ones. So we'll be doing that next week. So please, uh, you can, you know, let your friends and family know Maybe probably they're going to be the lucky ones, or it's going to be you, right? So, and there's also, we're also going to roll out uh, uh, like a special promotion for the Easter, just a very brief one. And that way, people can also take advantage of uh, the courses, right, with at a reduced price, right? So, welcome everybody once again. Uh, today's topic is the secret to London, a six figure cybersecurity job. And before you say, mm, is that possible? You know, wait till the end, and uh, you are going to know exactly what we are talking about when we talk about the secret of landing a, a six-figure cybersecurity job. Now, if you are in cybersecurity already making six figures, uh, what we are going <laughs> to talk about is still gonna help because guess what? Uh, you can still use that to uh, you know, move up the ladder. Uh, so if you are in the early six figures, uh, you'll be able to 
you know, uh, get to the latest figures or even get in the, you know, jump from hundreds to uh, the 200 uh, side of the house. Okay, so uh, everybody's going to gain something out of this, right? So let's uh, begin. Welcome to Arrhythmus Academy. Uh, if you are new to the family, I'm Dr. Emmanuel Edu. I'm going to be the presenter for this session. I'm a former United States Army captain. I'm a QSA. Uh, I'm the CEO of a QSA company, uh, Arrhythmus Inc based in New York. I'm also the founder of Arrhythmus Academy, a training institute, training cybersecurity professionals, helping bridge the gap uh, in the talent and also the knowledge gap in security. And uh, I'm a former professor at University of Maryland, Global Campus and also CTC. Uh, so that is a little bio about me, but uh, enough about that. So what are we doing today? Uh, as usual, we'll be talking about, we will at least look at two cybersecurity, uh, new, like two cybersecurity uh, trending uh news and then we will uh we will look at the secret of london a six figure cyber security job so we will look at overview of the cyber security job market uh, the demand for uh, cyber security professionals within your state within your metro area and then also entry level positions in cyber security uh cyber security career switch uh, which is where a lot of most folks get stuck right doing the switch uh, sometimes people get frustrated and they just give up, right? But uh, we're going to talk more about that and what you can do. And then we'll talk about uh, what the secret is, right? So let's start with some cybersecurity news. Now, uh, in cyber news this week, uh, TikTok, the United States Congress, uh, they are on the verge of uh, suspending TikTok or banning TikTok in the United States, right? I think previously, President Trump kind of went on that line. And for some reason, they just, you know, allowed it back. Uh, so TikTok is a Chinese-based social media company. Uh, everybody knows TikTok. Maybe you don't know where exactly it originated from. Now, the CEO of TikTok had to come to Congress to answer some questions, right? And uh, they will gladly do so because uh, America is a huge market. And you don't want... Uh, if you are an app or like a social media app, you don't want to be banned in the United States, right? So he came to Congress to answer some questions. And the questions were that on, uh, like the main concern for uh, the lawmakers, like the main concerns were uh, predominantly privacy, data privacy, you know, and then also uh, the privacy of uh, like users and then also children, right? You know, children are also allowed to use TikTok. So preventing children from harmful uh, events and harmful things that people are doing on TikTok that they want to mimic, right? So that was what the whole conversation about. Uh, the CEO being a CEO, just like how when they have the CEO of uh, Facebook come to Congress, right? How it goes is similar to this. Uh, he tried to, you know, uh, I mean, he's a CEO, so he'll be coached on how to answer the questions and stuff. So uh, I think if you look at the footage, uh, some of the Congress uh, men and women were a bit uh, frustrated with the questions because they weren't getting what they wanted to get out of him. But uh, now, after the whole, you know, deliberation and discussion, uh, Congress is still pushing to still ban TikTok in the United States. So we see how that goes, right? So uh, you can read more about that. Uh, I think it's all over the news, so uh, you'll be able to read more about it. Now, uh, chat GPT is in the news again. And this time around, guess what happened? Uh, I think they are on the right side, on the wrong side of security. Uh, so what happened with Chat uh, GPT uh, was that, as, as you've realized, if you are a user of uh, this app, uh, they've been taking it down. You know, it's like sometimes when you try to go there, it will tell you uh, it is full or like it has reached its capacity because they are still working on it, right? So. Uh, they will take it out offline and then bring it back online. Now they took it offline on Monday, right? Just this past Monday. And when they did, uh, they realized that they, for some reason, I think it was like a coding error or something. Uh, the information, PII and cardholder data information of their customers uh, got exposed, right? So if you are not a paid customer, your credit card and debit card information, obviously, uh, are not going to get exposed because you don't have to use that when you are using it, when you sign up as a normal user. But if you are a paid user, uh, then your card information might probably 
might might have probably been uh, compromised. So uh, that was Chad's uh, GPT in the news uh, for some little bridge. I mean, not little, but you know, some bridge. And as a company, you know, uh, an AI company who is doing so well, you don't want to be having such you know in incidents and issues, right? So that is also in the news. So just to let you know, if you are paid customer, uh, just be on the lookout. Well, if, if you are unlucky and maybe probably your card information or was part of what was exposed, then you know uh, you have to be on the lookout probably to see if there are any uh, fraudulent charges or if any malicious actors are trying to uh, use your credit card or debit card anywhere, right? All right, so uh, let's jump into today's topic. Uh, the secret of London, a six-figure cybersecurity job. Now, uh, before we 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 jump into it, we have to do some market research, right? Is it even possible to make six figures uh, at the entry level in cybersecurity or even in cybersecurity in general, right? So uh, with such a question, we don't have to look any further. We just have to go straight to the source. That is the U.S. Bureau of Statistics, uh, Labor Statistics, and we are going to go to their page, do some research on there. Everybody is going to see, you know, exactly how to look for uh, information when it information about, you know, uh, different uh, jobs, jobs and job titles and different industries, right? So this is going to be a learning process, not just for cybersecurity, but uh, if you want to do a research into any career, uh, what we are going to do is what exactly you are supposed to do, right? And from the statistics from uh, this government agency. Uh, cybersecurity is growing at a rate of 33% and even more. So, because like this was, I think this was 2020, 2021 was when they came up with this, right? So I'm going to unshare my screen and then we are going to go straight to the website for US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And we are going to learn about cybersecurity uh, professionals and how much they are earning their uh, average or mean uh, salary and all that. So. Uh, please bear with me. We're going to bring that up here shortly. All right, so there we are. Uh, this is the site for the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And when you come in here, you don't have to really do anything special. All you can, all you have to do is you can just come in here and type in information security analyst. Now, the uh, reason why I'm typing in information security analyst is that when you go through their list of uh, jobs by industry and also uh, by like specifically looking at information security, uh, the only job title that they have here is information security analyst. That doesn't mean information security analyst is the only job title that is out there. Uh, that only shows, I mean, they are, uh, from the best of my understanding, uh, they are kind of uh, generalizing all job titles, just making it information security analyst uh, to represent information security analyst or uh, cyber security or information security jobs uh, across board, right? So. Uh, that is the only job title that they have in there, right? So everything else that everybody is doing, all of it, we can, you know, uh, put all of it together in one and make it information security analysis. Now they have uh, two different uh, uh, publications about the details or the statistics about uh, cyber security jobs or information security analyst roles, or let's say just cyber security jobs, right? So. Uh, if you come here, they have what they call the Occupational uh, Outlook Handbook. So they have this for all uh, different industries and different job titles. So it's not only for cybersecurity. So if you, you have any specific uh, job title in, in, in mind, uh, you can go ahead and 
look that up. And when you come here, you see uh, they do they do a quick summary. So based on 2021 uh, statistics uh, or survey that they did, uh, the main pay for information security analysts is 102, right? That is for 2021, we're in 2023. And I think per hour was 49 uh, per hour. Uh, typical entry level uh, education. So it says here a bachelor's degree. They didn't say bachelor's degree in what, right? So, but uh, also for, you know, industry knowledge, you don't necessarily need a bachelor's degree. Uh, it is not going to count against you if you know your stuff. Uh, and if you have it, it's not going to count uh, as a plus if you don't know your stuff, right? So <laughs> what I mean is, Bachelor's degree, if you have it, is good. If you don't have it, it's okay. But uh, what you are looking for is what you know and what you are bringing to the table, right? So if you have a degree and you don't know your stuff, it's not really going to help. Uh, if you know, have a degree and you know your stuff, then yes, it's going to help. And mostly, uh, they will take uh, degrees, mostly uh, business degrees uh, or typical IT degrees, you know, like computer science and the rest. But if you have a degree in anything, uh, you are still uh, okay, right, to land a cybersecurity job. Now, experience uh, is relative uh, in in relation to uh, people like uh, experience that they look for. Like the average uh, is less than five years, right? Now they need a lot of folks in cybersecurity. So uh, this is generally like entry level zero to five or four uh, years is what we are looking at. And the number of job openings at that time, as of 2021, was uh, 163. And this is uh, for, although we are generalizing everything, but for this, uh, around 2021, the general the job openings for cybersecurity in general was around 500,000 uh, in the United States. So uh, this may be probably predominantly speaking to job titles with information security, right? And outlook and okay, so uh, how like the growth of the industry is thirty five percent, right? And uh, employment change uh, is five thousand six hundred uh, fifty six uh, fifty six thousand. Uh, so with employment change, I don't really know if you are talking about career switch and people who change careers and stuff like that. Well, so this is the handbook, right? Uh, let's look at the other sites is and is the same page uh, on the same website so this gives the occupational employment and uh, wage statistics so once we come down here it gives a really like a good breakdown of currently what the average salary or the mean salary for uh, cyber security professionals will look like right so here uh, it gives you employment 157000 uh Wage minimum wage is 54, and the mean annual uh, or the mean salary is 113, right? So, uh, if we are talking about six figures, it's not just me trying to make something up or to sell you anything. This is fact, right? If you are taking anything below 100, is on you, right? So, if I were you and I saw this, I'm not going to go for anything below 100. Now you cannot just say you're not going for anything below 100 if you don't know your stuff, right? So caveat to that is you have to know your stuff uh, inside out, right? So, and everything that you need to know, we are going to look at and cover. So uh, just stay tight, uh, stay put. We are, and if you come down here, we have uh, industry profile. So they go through in that by industry, right? Which industries are employing more uh, cybersecurity professionals? Right, and how much are they paying them? So if you go down the list, uh, they have computer system design and related services. Now, if you click on it, it's gonna give you a, like a rundown of uh, maybe probably uh, companies or similar companies, or uh, it's gonna give you like a list or exactly what they mean by uh, computer systems design and related services. Now, if you do government contracting and all that, uh, you know this is like a big classification of a whole variety of uh, companies that do different things, right? So uh, this is how they classified a, a lot of like companies uh, together. So companies within the computer systems design and related space, 
they employ 42,000 plus of security professionals and minimum wage is 53. Uh, no, that is mean wage is 53. And then also the mean uh, wage is 110, right? And the list goes on. So just, just to show you that you can even do your uh, investigations and go down the list and you'll be able to, you know, see who is paying more for what, right? So I think th that the mean for other information services is really high is 100 and almost 150, right? So uh, we can go down the list. There is, you know, uh, more. And then when you come here, they have by state, uh, they've listed it by state. So which states, uh, states with the highest employment level in information security, they have it by state. So Virginia uh, is the highest, followed by Texas, followed by Florida, New York, and Maryland. That is not to say, if you are not living in any of these states, you are not going to find a job. But now, most of the jobs are remote anyways, right? So uh, you can find jobs here and still stay wherever you are and work from there, right? If it has to be in person, then oh, well, you have to, you know, move to that state. And also by how much they pay, uh, mostly, you know, the, your salary or like the wage will be based on the cost of living within the area that we are looking at. So obviously New York uh, is the highest, not saying that I think it's also a bit costly in Virginia and Maryland. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but Florida, uh, Florida is also a bit costly. Maybe I bet to differ, but in Texas, uh, Texas is a hundred. So, okay. And all these are statistics from uh, the U.S. labor statistics. So, uh, I mean, what do I know? What is there is what, you know, is uh, like, what is there is what is there. Maybe what I think might not be that accurate. Uh, so states with the highest concentration of jobs and location uh, quotient for information security, that also the list uh, predominantly almost like the one that we looked at. I think the street of Columbia, you took with the D, in, within the D.C. area, uh, Maryland, D.C., District of Columbia, uh, they are in the top three, obviously. And if you go down the list, so there's right different, uh, like different tables and statistics. For my point is, you can come here and do a lot of research, right? Uh, see by state or you know which states is employing or paying more which states needs more security professionals. And we are going to look more into that also as well here shortly, uh, doing some more investigations into uh, the job market, right? You have to investigate the job market before you try to uh, even look for a job, right? So you just don't go applying blindly uh, if you want to hit the six-figure mark and you know, uh, know that where you are going, you'll be able to get that. You have to do some research first, right? So the list goes on. I mean, we can go in all day, but I think you get the point. So everybody, uh, you just have to Google bls.gov and it's going to bring you here, right? So everybody should be able to do this. Now let's go to the next uh, page or then the next uh, uh, website that we are going to use for our market, you know, uh, investigation. So this page uh, is website that we are going to use for. Okay, I think somebody muted themselves. Okay, so this is also another page that is run by Department of Commerce, uh, is cyberseek.org. Uh, so I think most people who've gone through uh, cyber security uh, for beginners, the free course, we looked at this uh, in there. So you should be able to, I mean, uh, most people have exposure to this, right? Uh, before I continue, I think Bernard had his hand up. Uh, I'll let Bernard go. Bernard, go ahead if you had a question. Thank you, Dr. Edu. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Yes, uh, with regards to TikTok, something keeps baffling my mind always. And because you have been there before, I think you'll be able to shed some lights on it. Uh, TikTok boss was asked to come to Congress to answer a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, uh, these politicians, I know most of them have their professions become, before becoming politicians. The questions they were asking, 
and the answers they were getting from uh, the CEO of TikTok. If you are not uh, IT security uh, expert, there's no way you're going to understand some of these things because he was talking about firewalls being put before so that it could fi filter some of the concerns of uh, this politician. So my question was that if these guys are not cyber IT guys and uh, the CEO was saying all this stuff to them, how are they able to comprehend and understand exactly whether he's making sense or he's not making sense? Okay. That's my question. question. Yeah. All right. Great question. Uh, but not. So, you know, like the Congress, men and women, uh, they cannot know everything, right? And they have to not just uh, interviewing or uh, having IT folks come and answer questions. They have people from financial side, health side, so what they do, they have eight. So their eight will like they have like like people on their team who will be well vested in security or in IT or in you know like whichever topic, and they are going to brief them and explain things to them, right, in layman terms for them to be able to understand. And they are the ones who also prepare the questions for them, right. So you see yeah, that, uh, and you can. What, pick what up. of uh, mm -hmm. if it were to be me or you, Doctor Edu? There are follow up questions. Mm -hmm. That when when the CEO answers, you will have to ask a follow up question because so that, you don't. Their they, aid is still like their aid still sent by them, and they write the questions for them and put it in front of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That was my only concern. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So, uh, cyberseek.org uh, is our next stop for our market research for uh, cyber security jobs. So cyberseek.org is a really good tool. It gives us in real time, the demand for security professionals. So let's go to the heat map. If you go to their heat map, uh, what it does is it shows you exactly the demand for cyber security professionals in real time, right? So we are going to know this is, this number right here is, the total cybersecurity job openings in the United States as of today, right? Now, if you go here, we have the map, like the heat map. If you, depending on uh, which states that you are highlighting, it gives you the number of job openings in that state. So for New York, we have 31,000 plus cybersecurity job openings. For Pennsylvania, 24,000. For Maine, is 3,000. For Virginia is 60,000 for uh, North Carolina is 23,000. So you can, you know, play around and see for your states, right? And this is in real time, right? They update this uh, around 2020. This was uh, about 500,000 cybersecurity job openings. But today, 2023 uh, is almost 800. Uh, it's almost seven, uh, it's 750, right? Seven, 750 plus, right? So the demand is only going to go up. You can also narrow this down and bring it to your metro areas, right? So within the states, you can check the different metro, like the different metro areas, right, to see the demand within your state. So uh, if you are, you know, looking for a job or you want to see how the job market is like for your state, you don't have to look any further. Like this is the one-stop shop for you. Uh, this is in real time. So sometimes uh, this will be better than the one from uh, the Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics, right? Because this is in real time, they update it uh, on a regular basis. Right? Now let's go to career path and look at entry level uh, roles and their salaries. So it's not me saying uh, you can make six figures uh, starting off as a security professional, uh, but everything that, you know, I like to really present you with the facts and have you decide for yourself. So for this uh, setup, which is the career path by CyberSeek, this is also updated in real time, right? And they have entry level roles, they have mid-level roles, they have advanced level roles. So for anybody who is not familiar with entry level, mid-level and advanced, 
uh, in any uh, industry that you go into, right? If you are starting off, you are starting off at the entry level because your experience is zero to uh, between your your experience is between zero to uh, five years or below zero to four and a half five years and then below right uh, for mostly some some schools of thought will say entry level between zero to three years or two years now if you hit a uh, five year mark or four and a half five year mark you are at the inter you are at the mid level or intermediate level right and anything uh, above you know uh, seven six years going to 10 years uh, 10 years plus your advanced level right so within the cyberspace if you are starting off you'll be starting off here sometimes uh, depending on the job some jobs are borderline uh, mid-level although it might be entry level but borderline mid-level so you can start with jobs like that depending on the skill set that you are bringing on the table right so for these entry levels these are some of the job titles by no means all of it uh, these are some of the job titles so we have security analyst uh cyber crime analyst information uh, incidents and intrusion analyst it auditor now if we point on the circle that is here it shows us the job openings and then it also shows us the average salary right so for security analysts at the entry level average salary is 107 for uh, incident analyst the average is 89,000, uh, right? For IT auditor, the average is 111, right? And I think we didn't look at cybercrime. Cybercrime is 100 flat, right? Uh, I think in 2020, there are about 2021, the average for security analysts was 93 or 91, right? So the number keeps increasing. Now, it also shows you how you'll be able to move from you know, uh, one entry level into intermediate level role, right? So from security analyst, you can move into, uh, from cybersecurity specialist, you can move into cybersecurity analyst, you can move into cybersecurity consultant, you can move down into pen tester if you want to go that route, right? So it is showing you some of the career path if you, you are here, where you can go from there, right? And so now let's look at intermediate level, their salaries as well. So uh, analyst, intermediate level, uh, you are looking at 109 uh, for consultant 92 for pen tester 101 right so some jobs you can start as entry level but still the job title might be security uh, consultant right mostly don't get hung up on job titles uh you can be a security analyst here and somebody will be a secret so you can be a security analyst for one company somebody will be a security analyst for company b both of you will be doing two different things, right? But what you need to have is a solid foundation. That way, if you know you have a good working knowledge of security, uh, regardless if they switch up job roles on you, you are still going to be good, right? Uh, because if you get hanged up on job titles, you go into the job and guess what? Probably what they have listed, uh, they change their mind, they're gonna have you do something else. So if all you knew was incident response, then you don't know anything else aside that, then you're going to run into issues. So uh, this is also a very good place for you to do your research uh, into, you know, how much you can be making as a security professional, uh, where you can come from in terms of uh, moving up the ladder. And then also feeder, they have feeder roles. So these roles are uh, other IT roles that from which you can jump into uh, cyber security roles. So networking, software development, uh, system engineering, finance, uh, IT support, uh, all these are roles that you can, you know, from which you can branch into. And you can also come from no IT background, zero, and still be able to jump into entry level, right? So we will talk and discuss that more also as we move along. Now, I think they have a new tab in here. Uh, I've not seen this. So they have skills uh, and certification. Okay. I think this used to be at the bottom, but any which ways. So they have they have done what we call mapping uh, in security. This is not mapping frameworks, but mapping uh, certifications and job titles and uh, top skills that you need. So uh, let's just take a look for some of the certifications on here. 
uh, these are, let's just go with security plus. That's a very common one that almost everybody starting off will have. So with security plus, some of these are some of the job titles that you can have with security plus, right? Now, granted, with some of these job titles, you need, you know, additional training uh, to be able, especially an example like pen testing, uh, just passing your security plus wouldn't make you a pen tester, right? You need to have some uh, additional training on that to be able to function as a security. Uh, but for security analysts uh, with security plus, if you don't just have the certification, but then you have the knowledge and skill to back it up, you'll be able to do most of these jobs. Now, if you know, everybody should just, if you've not played around with this too, please do. Uh, and with the skills portion also as well, uh, it shows you what type of skills and like what you're going to be doing, uh, the things that you need to be able to function in your job roles. Now, these are not by any means all of it, right? But it's a, at least a good starting point for you, right? And then when it comes to education providers uh, and all that, you can also find some on here by your state. Yeah, so you can also find by this by your state, right? Uh, I think they ha we had an arithmetic listed uh, on here last time, but I'm not sure if uh, arithmetic is still there. Let's just give it a shot. Right then, right? Uh, so arithmetic is also listed as one of the training institutes that you can on CyberSeq, which is pretty cool. All right. so. Uh, any questions on this before we move on? Congratulations, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, we've been there for a while, uh, but I don't think most people even know. Congrats, Doc. All right. So, great job. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. So uh, proud of you. Thank you. Uh, let's continue with the presentation we started with, and then we'll look at. And uh, now talk more and then, you know, uh, review the secrets. So let's, let me share my screen again. All right, so the next thing that we are going to look at, you know, uh, if we are looking at how to, or oh, we are looking at the secret of making six figures uh, as a security professional, most folks are switching from uh, other careers into cybersecurity, or even if you're in cybersecurity already or in IT, you want to upgrade, right? Uh, get a high paying role uh, and a role that you're gonna do more, uh, obviously. Now, uh, you cannot do the switch or you cannot do the upgrade without going through the following items that we'll be talking about, right? So we are going to look at these items one after the other, and then we will explain it a little bit further. And then once we're done, you know, we talk about the secret and then we open the floor for everybody to also chime in. Now, uh, you cannot do any of the switching or upgrading without one education, right? And what do we mean by education? Uh, education, there are three main ways that we can go about, you know, the education that we are going to get to be able to start a career in cybersecurity or upgrade ourselves in cybersecurity. So one, uh, we can do self-study, right? We can get the books, get the material, you know, watch some YouTube channel uh, uh, videos, right? Just try to do it on our own, right? And with guidance, like the one that I just gave you with some market research and knowing exactly what you are looking for, uh, you can be successful through that, right? The second one is to go to college, uh, go and do two-year or four-year degree. And then after that, uh, you can do the switch. Or the last one, uh, you can do what we will call in the industry bootcamp. So three to six months, you know, nine months training. And, you know, turn around is really quick, you know, get into the industry as well. So three ways that you can uh, go. So with self-study is the cheapest out of the three. Uh, college, obviously, the most expensive out of the three. Uh, boot camps uh, and training institutes that are not traditional schools, kind of intermediate between 
you know, not as costly as uh, uh, your traditional uh, college and then not as cheap as self-study, right? Now, with all three, uh, in terms of how easy you'll be able to That's get funny. into the industry, uh, self-study, if you know what you are doing. So for folks who are already in the security space or who are already in IT, who knows what they are doing, uh, they are, you know, they are very successful when it comes to self-study, you know, to a point. Now, if you are very new to cybersecurity, you are very new to IT and you want to do self-study, depending on your drive, you can do it. Uh, but if you don't take care, you run around in circles for a long time, right? So uh, some things that is going to take you, you know, months to figure out, somebody can easily just tell you uh, if you were in a traditional school or you were doing sort of a boot camp. Right now, with traditional schools, uh, colleges, uh, I mean, colleges are colleges. If you go there to study cybersecurity, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get a degree. Uh, but then also, mostly uh, now, uh, the only issue is that with, uh, once you're done, right, mostly unlike bootcamps, they don't have uh, that community or they, they don't have uh, it where you can reach out to instructors and you know, if you run into issues on the job, unless of course you have a special relationship with instructors. And then two, also if you don't have the money and the time, you don't have two years to spare or four years to spare to do a career change, then that is not gonna be the best option for you. But if you are fairly young, uh, you have to get a degree uh, at a point, or even in the career, like if you are switching uh, and you want to do maybe a master's in cybersecurity, uh, still, you can do it, but then, you know, uh, my advice is get into the industry first before you try to go do masters in cybersecurity, right? Now, with the last option, which is the bootcamp uh, sort of training, that is what Arrhythmus Academy does. Uh, that is kind of uh, the fine, uh, like, the, the, like the best of both worlds, right? So you are not spending too much time, nor too much money, and there is guidance, you are not trying to figure it out on your own, right? And there is always, you know, a place to fall back on and you always have like that community, right? So your cohort, uh, you can always reach out and the networking piece is also really good in like in those sense, right? So education, uh, those are the three ways that you can go about education. Now with certifications, uh, industry certifications or industry recognized certifications with, uh, so let me break that down. Uh, education, once you're done with any school, right, uh, traditional school, uh, colleges, once you're done, they'll give you a diploma, they'll give you a degree, right? Those degrees are not industry uh, recognized certifications, right? Those are academic certifications. If you go to Arrhythmus Academy, you go to any other bootcamp, they're gonna give you certificate of completion, right? Those are certificates of completion. They are not uh, cybersecurity certifications. So with cybersecurity certifications, you have to sit for, sit for an exam. Right, sit for an exam from one of the certification vendors. And certification vendors, we have ISACA, uh, Comtia, ISE Square, there's a whole list of them, right? So depending on what type of certification you are looking for, uh, mostly everybody studying in security will start with Comtia Security Plus, right? So uh, industry certifications, they are good if you are able to get them, right? But they are not, uh, if you have it, it doesn't mean they're not going to ask you any questions during interviews, uh, but they are good to have. And reason why I uh, encourage everybody, uh, if you have the chance to take them, is the preparation that you go through in, you know, uh, preparing yourself to sit for it. It is all part of the learning process. Uh, you are acquiring knowledge and skill uh, in that process. Uh, what I will uh, discourage people from doing when it comes to certifications, don't that your end goal shouldn't be just to chase the certification and pass. If that becomes your goal, then what we run into is people will just get dumb questions or practice tests. They memorize the, the test questions. They go sit for exam. If they are lucky and most of their questions are on the exams, they pass. Now they pass, they have security plus, but they don't have the knowledge and skill to back it up. That is the last thing you want to do, right? Uh, so what you want to do is to be able to sit for exams and at least no 80 to 90 percent of uh, the questions that you've been asked right and you're able to answer them on your own merits that boosts your confidence and then also on the job if you meet similar uh, similar scenarios or similar uh, uh, problems 
right? Then you know you are very confident in your own ability to do it, right? So you don't want to be parading around certifications that you cannot uh, uh, that you cannot uh, really uh, uh, back it up with the knowledge and skill that uh, you have to have for those uh, certifications. Okay. Now, uh, when we come to so yes, that is for uh, certifications. Now, the next thing that we look at. All right, so uh, hopefully everybody can still hear me. Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, with a practical experience, uh, what we look at is mostly if you are doing self-study, uh, it's pretty hard to, you know, gain practical experience if you know what you are doing, uh, right? if, uh, if you don't know what you are doing, right? So with practical experience here, uh, we, are not look, we are not talking about experience, paid experience. So let's say, uh, for example, if you download Nexus, right? Uh, and you are using the free version of Nexus to do scans and to do reports, all those will, that will count towards your practical experience because on the job, if they are using Nexus, you'll be able to use Nexus, right? So uh, any training uh, that will push you on those lines of using some of the tools, uh, doing some of the projects uh, in security. That is, you know, that training is what is really going to help you uh, on the job. An example of how you'll be able to gain practical experience, obviously, internships and workshops, you know, like the one that we do at uh, Arrhythmus. So uh, if you have the practical uh, or you have some practical experience uh, during interviews, that is even going to help you to scale interviews uh, easily, pretty easily, because everybody else who is coming in, uh, probably coming in with just, you know, knowledge from maybe probably what they studied or what they've been taught. Uh, but if you have the practical uh, experience, even when you speak, it shows, right? Because everything that you're saying is something you've done. And that is our philosophy of Arrhythmus. Uh, you have to be able to speak to what you've done, not what you know. Right, speaking to what you've read somewhere is different from uh, speaking to what you've done. Uh, it becomes easier, and we are really able to, you know, convince whoever is listening to you, and they are also able to see or uh, get to know that yes, uh, you know, you sound like you know what you are talking about, and you've actually done this. And if they ask you follow-up questions on, you know, issues in doing uh, like whatever that you did, uh, you'll be you, you you'll be able to easily talk about it because you've actually done it. Right now, the next thing that we'll look at uh, in the switch process is networking. Networking is very critical. Uh, you have to build or you have to be part of uh, a group that is going to help you grow. And then also, you know, uh, if there is a job opening somewhere, somebody can also let you know, hey, uh, this is what is going on. And uh, before I even move, uh, move on from that, right, you know, in the security space, uh, it is really broad, but it's small. So uh, people that you meet in groups uh, or in, ne in networking sessions and in programs that you attend, they are the same people that you're going to be meeting around uh, in other areas of security, right? So networking is key. Uh, try to attend as many uh, webinars, as many in-person workshops that you can, right, within your city within your state uh, and in so doing uh, it will amaze you you know some of the opportunities that will come your way and then also you get to learn uh, more uh, about the industry right now the next thing we will look at is continuous learning uh, so with continuous learning uh, you have to stay up to date Re whether you are already in the industry working or whether uh, you are trying to get into the industry so some people, uh, an example of what uh, we talk about when we say continuous learning, you came to a rhythm to, you know, uh, maybe you went through our entry level course, we are done, you went through the internship, we are done, you are looking for a job, uh, it's almost two months, you've not found a job, 
and you don't even go back to your notes you don't revise you are not keeping up to uh, speed with all the things that you went through right you are not doing continuous learning right so uh especially for folks who are not who who are not coming from an it background or cyber security background uh, if you go through the training for the next you know three to five months and you are done that shouldn't be it don't put your tools away and you know go to sleep on yourself waiting for the job because on the job guess what you're going to need the tools that you put away so why don't you keep sharpening your tools whilst you're waiting to land the job and even when you land the job uh don't put your tools away because chances are you can find yourself in a job where you are just doing one thing right out of everything that you know you are just using some you know just a few set of skills that you know uh, the rest of it if you don't use it you are going to lose it right so it is it's a very common for you to be in the in the in the security space for five years uh and after five years you are switching jobs and you go to an interview and you are going to sound like you've never even worked in security right because maybe probably in this job you are just using these two tools and that is all that you did you never had any encounter with incident response you never had any encounter with any other area you never had an encounter with any compliance you know problems or deal with any framework and you didn't screw yourself on it or you didn't you know stay up to date by uh taking other courses by attending webinars and seminars right uh, if you do that then uh, you are going to get rust right? so whether you are in or you are trying to get in you know uh, best way to stay up to date is continuous learning right now uh the next thing that we will look at uh, is develop a specialty so developing a specialization uh we are talking about you focusing on an area in cyber security and becoming a subject matter expert in that area right so an example a typical one that probably comes to mind for everybody pci dss or any other framework that you want to specialize in but now uh you cannot specialize in any area if you don't have a good working knowledge in cyber security right so for you to specialize in an area it means you know you have a foundation upon which you are building to specialize in an area right so uh, specializing is also going to help you stand out and also help you reach that six figure goal right so uh and the next thing uh, or the last but one thing that we are going to talk about is uh, communication and soft skills so soft skills uh, everybody who's been uh with the arrhythmics family for a while you know i'm a big uh, i stress really big on soft skills right because reason being that most of our students uh, who go to interviews all the way to uh level three right to the third interview and and don't get the job uh reason why they don't get a job is not because of their technical knowledge but because of soft skills and you know how they are able to demonstrate that they have the soft skills needed for the role right so most people think doing career switch uh, or upgrading uh you need only technical knowledge or like technical skills right uh it's not only that some jobs require you to have more soft skills than even technical skills right so we just have to uh, keep note of that so what do we mean by soft skills so your uh, uh critical thinking skills your communication skills interpersonal skills uh all those a whole is leadership management team player skills uh being able to lead a team right to accomplish a mission all those will count towards your soft skills right and everybody uh, on this call is bringing on board some soft skills from uh, other industries that you've worked in or other jobs that you've worked in so uh, just from the get-go you have some skills already that is needed in cyber security so if you add to it uh, i mean uh, you are already there so probably maybe 30 percent of the skills that is needed you already have right but it's just uh, you being able to identify or uh, identify what we call transferable skills right transferable skills being the skills that you can transfer from your present job into uh the cyber security space or whatever job that you are looking or job role that you are looking for in security right now uh the next thing that i'll, I'll talk about is uh, tailoring your your job search right so to be able to, to be very successful or like one of the secrets in london 
uh, a six figure security job is to tailor your job search, right? So one, uh, you have to customize your resume and a cover letter for every single job that you want, right? I know uh, for our students, we have some techniques for the job application. Uh, tailoring your, your uh, resume and cover letter is one of them, right? Uh, so you can just be using uh, one resume for all jobs. Uh, if you do that, there's gonna be a lot of frustration because uh, most of these jobs are gonna pass you by, right? So if you tailor, and how do you tailor your resume to a job is making sure that you have enough of the keywords in the job description in your resume and your uh, cover letter. Now, cover letter is big. Uh, most people just go around with your resume with no cover letter, but the, the cover letter is gonna let you stand out. And it's also an avenue for you to express uh, yourself and talk more uh, about yourself and your capabilities, uh, because that gives you that space that you are not gonna get uh, on your resume, right? Because your resume is, you know, shouldn't be more than uh, uh, your resume on, you know, a very good day shouldn't be more than I'll say two two pages, right? Uh, if if possible, one page, but one page is not doable, so at least two pages. Uh, so there is not enough space for you to be writing uh, other stuff. But then cover letters give you the space to, you know, uh, as if it and talk about the skill sets that you have and also the transferable skills you are bringing from any other industry that you are coming from, right? So uh, tailoring your jobs search uh, is also key. Now, preparing for interviews uh, is what really, you know, uh, I would say will kill a lot of people's dream of switching careers or even doing career upgrade. Interviews can frustrate you. You know, interviews can really frustrate you. Now, people, some people do 10, 20, 40 interviews before they are able to make it, right? But the key here is uh, preparation for the interview is the most important, right? You have to prepare, prepare, and prepare. Now, what are some of the things that you can do for the preparation? For the job title, uh, for the uh, job description, making sure that uh, everything on the job description, right, uh, you can speak to it in terms of how to do it, uh, in terms of practicality, not just by definitions and theory, right? Don't go into uh, interviews with a lot of definitions because nobody really cares about definition. They, they care about how you'll be able to do what they have on there, right? So uh, that will be part of the preparation and also practice. Even if you've been in security for a while and the job you're looking for, everything on there is something you can do. Uh, you have to practice answering your questions. If you don't, uh, on the day of the interview, that is where you are going to be fumbling, even though you know uh, your stuff, like even though you know the content or like you know uh, what they are looking for and you've been, like you've been doing it for a while. So an example, just for everybody not to answer this, but uh, right now, if I ask you, tell me about yourself. It's about you, right? This is not some question that you cannot answer. But if I tell you, tell me about yourself, if you've not practiced telling me about yourself, you are going to be all over the place, right? And now you don't know where to start, whether to start talking about your family or work or educational background or, right? But if you've practiced, you know, I'm going to talk about this first, this second, this third, and it's going to be only four lines or three lines or two lines, right? And then that's it, right? So practice, I mean, uh, in the army, everything that we do, they said you have to do three main things. The first one is to practice, Second one is to practice. Third one is to practice, right? So you're not gonna get it wrong. You're gonna rehearse, 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 or practice, 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 uh, till you have it down, you know? Uh, so I can't stress on that enough during interviews. Now we are going to talk a little bit more about interviews and the type of interviews that you are going to go through, right? Uh, now the next thing that we will look at is persistence. Be persistent. Be persistent. Uh, for a company to pay you six figures is not you know something that they're going to hand over to you uh, easy right if you are lucky like shilla then you're going to do one interview and get the job or even if you are lucky at like michael max then you don't even have to interview uh, they're just going to give you the job right but for everybody else uh you have to go through the mill do your interview at least two three interviews so 
reason why I'm talking about being persistent is you cannot, right, uh, land your dream cyber security job if you don't interview for it or if you don't push. You are going to have some bad interviews, some good interviews that you think you almost nailed it. It's not going to work out, uh, but you just have to keep pushing, right? And that is how it is. You just have to keep pushing. Now, we saw that the demand of secu for security professionals is very high. That doesn't necessarily mean that if you go to interviews, you are just handing out uh, positions like candy, <laughs> right? Uh, because the, the, the job role that you are going to assume uh, is very uh, sensitive, right? So you are going to help the organization protect their infrastructure. So they want to be sure that whoever they are bringing on board uh, will be able to do the job, right? So uh, being persistent, and when we open the floor, there are a lot of folks on here who are going to tell you their story. Uh, if you are not persistent, you are not going to win, right? Uh, if you apply for two, three jobs and you give up, how would you know if the fourth job was going to be it or the fifth or the sixth, right? So uh, people who stay with it are people who win, right? And not just staying with it uh, without learning anything as you're moving from interview to interview to interview. As you're going through interviews, you are going to learn more. So I tell everybody, uh, interviewing is, even if you, you like you landed your, your cyber security job, just do interviews for fun. Reason being that whilst you are doing interviews, you are learning more about the industry. You are learning more about what employers are looking for. Right. So if you landed a job, you've been working for a year, you've not interviewed, you are getting rusty. Right. Uh, you are getting rusty. So as you are doing interviews now, you know the new trends that are going on, what employees are looking for. So now you can come back and do your homework. Right. If they pick you for the job, you can decline the offer. Uh, if you cannot combine it with your current job. But if you can combine it, then oh well. Right. But interviewing, uh, if you have to go through, 10 interviews to land your cybersecurity job. Don't look at the interviews as, you know, uh, like a big hurdle. Uh, look at it more as part of the learning process because you are learning about the industry as you are going through interviews as well, right? So uh, interviewing and uh, being persistent, uh, I cannot really stress on that enough. So now uh, let's jump into interviews. So for cybersecurity interviews, Typically, you go through three interviews, right? Typically, you go through three. The first one is mostly going to be with a hiring manager. Uh, the second one is going to be with, you know, uh, it's going to be your technical uh, interview. So uh, that is probably going to be with some technical lead or a manager or, you know, somebody on those lines. Sometimes uh, the second interview will be half and half. So technical and a little bit of soft skills. Now, mostly after you scale the technical interview, your last interview is going to be with, you know, somebody in top management, so either VP, a VP or a CISO or CIO, one of those. And those interviews are going to be the killer, right? Those interviews are going to make or make you. Reason being that those interviews are not technical. They are soft skills, purely soft skills and your personality, right? Uh, so. Most people who skill the technical, they'll go from, you know, first interview, second interview, they go to the third interview and they're like, you know, uh, you know, I almost made it or, you know, I think I did well, but they didn't, you know, uh, pick me. So a, a typical example from one of our students uh, who went for the last interview and, you know, he came back complaining about the lady didn't ask him anything. They were just chit chatting. And then next, you know, uh, after, that she sent him an uh, the uh, the recruiter sent him an email saying they are moving on with somebody else. The lady didn't approve him. I mean, he went through the technical; he was good. Now, and some of the questions that you know he was asked during the normal, you know, what he he thought was an innocent uh, conversation, right? Rather more so than an interview, was the VP or I think the CISO was asking him about you know uh, where he went for like where. Where, what school he attended, uh, why he chose that school, how many kids, he, like, where does he have, why is he living in the States he wants to live in, or why did he move from maybe New York to Texas? What, 
you know, just it's like everyday conversation, you know, trying to know you. And then once they were done, you know, she's like, no, I'm not picking this guy. Uh, anybody knows why they will go with somebody else, even though they were not asking you really, you know, technical questions or any que like questions that you thought were just conversational. The key here is it wasn't conversational, right? Those questions that they are asking you, they are looking at uh, your analytical sk uh, skills. They are looking at uh, how uh, you make decisions. So all these are soft skills that they have. So if they ask you, why did you uh, maybe choose, why did you choose the school that you went to? And your goal is like, your answer is uh, because it was close to my house, right? Not much thoughts went into that choice, obviously. So they will mark that down. Okay, uh, you don't really analyze stuff well. Uh, so two, why did you move from Florida to New York? Uh, because my friend was moving. So, I mean, I decided to, right? So like you can see how these innocent questions can lead you to, right? But if you know they are not innocent questions, they are soft skills, then you are going to be well prepared for it. And even though the main goal for you moving to New York was to follow your friend, you are not going to say that in the interview, <laughs> right? You are going to make it, you know, make it more analytical, right? And make it, make them know that, you know, uh, you put some thought into it, right? So uh, the third interview is the killer. So everybody just to let you know, pay attention to the soft skills aspect, answering interview questions. Uh, so mostly with soft skills, uh, they will, some of the questions they are not going to ask you directly. So just like what I was talking about, the experience one of our students had, uh, they are going to ask you in a conversational way or something of those nature, and then they will just be checking off uh, based on the answers that you are giving them, right? So uh, just be cautious of that. Now you know that secret, right? So uh, last thing that we will look at before we talk about the secret is leveraging your non-cybersecurity skills. So from uh, all industries, there is something that you can bring on board in, uh, into the cyber security space, right? So uh, you have to identify, you, you, you have to be able to do what we call uh, identifying transferable skills. Right? Sorry, so uh, identifying you. transferable skills. Uh, go ahead. Like, was somebody asking something? Oh, okay. I think. Uh, Sorry, your screen sharing is off. Uh, say that again. The screen sharing is off. Yes, yes. Uh, the screen is off because I was having some technical issue here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, going back to the transferable skills. So, uh, transferable skills. Uh, there are a lot of skills that you are bringing uh, into cyber security without you knowing, right? So, aside. Uh, just the soft skills uh, based on what, uh, like whichever industry that you are coming from. Uh, so an example, a very typical example. So if you are uh, a teacher, right? And you you are switching to cybersecurity. Now the area of cybersecurity or the job that you are looking for in cybersecurity can also be teaching. You can easily switch over and then, you know, be teaching. Uh, security awareness to be, you know, like your focus is going to be security awareness training, right? So you can be a trainer elsewhere, get into security and still be a trainer, right? So although you need the cyber security knowledge and skill, uh, but the act of being a trainer still remains the same, right? So if I'm looking for a security trainer, right? Somebody to, you know, uh, do my security awareness training and on your resume, uh, you've gone through training, you've done cybersecurity, but on top of that, for the past 20 years, guess what you've been doing? You've been teaching and training. You stand a better chance than somebody who just, you know, maybe probably was a software engineer and they switched to become cybersecurity, uh, you know, uh, analyst. And now they are looking for that same gig that you are looking for, right? Because now your, your uh, teaching and training background carries a lot of weight and that is going to help you uh, on this side, right? So you have to be able to leverage whatever skill sets that you have coming into uh, security, right? And uh, 
that will help you to really cut down on the time. Uh, and then also is not, there's not gonna be much of an uphill battle. So an example, if you are moving from, let's say uh, maybe uh, training, still using like the teaching and training, uh, if you are coming from that and you want to move into an area of cybersecurity, which is going to require, you know, a different, totally new skill sets, uh, it's going to take you a while to be able to, you know, uh, uh, master those skill sets to be able to uh, confidently work anywhere, right? So we normally, uh, for us at Arithmetic, uh, mostly we will, you know, talk to you and see what you are bringing to the table and then point you in the right direction. Uh, but overall, regardless of whichever area you want to go into security, you have to have a good working knowledge of you know all major areas in security to be successful, right? So now let's get to the secret. What is the secret in landing your six figure, uh, your dream six figure cyber security guy? Now the secret is one, and the secret is know the security industry, right? Knowing the security industry is everything that we just looked at, all of it to this point. So if you know the industry, uh, you know what employers are looking for, you know what type of training you have to go through, you know what skill sets you know, applies to what job that you are looking for, right? Uh, you are networking on the side. So the secret is knowing the industry. Now, uh, six-figure jobs, they are not going to, you are not just going to uh, chance on them uh, and, you know, uh, be lucky and just chance on them. Anybody, everybody in cybersecurity uh, who is, you know, uh, who has a six-figure cybersecurity job, they work for it. So the secret is knowing the cybersecurity industry. So knowing it well enough, you don't have to be an expert and you, you cannot know everything, especially starting off. Uh, but everything that we've talked about, when you put all of that together, that is what we will equate to know the industry, right? So if you know the industry, you've done your research, uh, when you go for job interviews and they ask you, how much are you looking for for this role, right? You are not going to be scared when you are naming your price because you know the national uh, average. So you can, you know, gladly say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And then also, knowing the industry for the job that you're applying for, you also have to do your research and see what is the range they are looking to pay, right? So don't go into a job that is willing to pay 130 max, like that is the maximum they can pay and you're asking for 250, right? Uh, such jobs, I mean, even if they like you, they cannot give it to you, right? And then also, if you don't do your research on those angles, uh, you go and like they have, the minimum, but like their maximum is 100. Then you are asking for 130. You cannot drop 30 uh, by 30K and say, okay, I'll still accept 100, even though I wanted like my list was 130, right? So all that is knowing the industry. So everything that we talked about, uh, everything that we talked about, uh, the secret to everything is, knowing the industry and knowing the industry we touched on everything that you need to know to be able to be very successful now although we didn't go too much into uh, different programs where we talked about education right and we talked about all other areas as well right so uh we will leave the floor for any questions and for folks who just joined us the income sharing agreement uh, the income sharing program we sent it out by email to everybody and then also on our uh, chats, we also posted it uh, in the groups, uh, in the different groups. So if you are interested in the income sharing, uh, you can go ahead and uh, sign up for that. And uh, also for our next PCI class, the live session uh, is starting tentatively on the 18th of April. Now, next week during cyber chats, uh, we are going to give out uh, two PCI courses and then uh, two cyber security entry level courses. It's going to be at random selection, right? Uh, last time, some folks were sending us emails behind the scenes, uh, asking that you know they should be the 
lucky selected ones, it's not going to work that way, right? We are fair. Uh, it's going to be based on, you know, random selection. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you the criteria based on which we're going to select, but uh, the lucky ones are going to have access to those courses or like they are going to be, they are, they are going to get sponsorship from Arithmetic uh, and they will be enrolled in those courses, right? And also uh, we're going to be running uh, a short Easter promotion. So we'll also be on the lookout for that. Now, uh, we're going to leave the floor for questions. Uh, Ike, go ahead, Ike. Sorry. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Adu. I wanted to know, regarding the resume you talked about, uh, what about if someone uh, job uh, previous background is not all that like uh, something big? Is the person going to add it on the resume at the end of the course? Um, or would you advise the person to, you know, leave it alone and just put something like something something more better? Okay, so uh, if I got your question right, you asked him if somebody uh, was working, you know, a, a, like they are in a, a different industry and they are switching to cyber security, how are they going to go about their like resume? Is, is that what you asked them? Yes, like, like if, if, if the person was not like uh, in, in a kind of a professional uh, job previously, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now you want to a resume to get uh, this six-figure job? How are you going to go about it? Well, what do you mean by like, professional job? Yeah, like, like an example, someone was doing like a, a very small paying job of maybe uh, $14, $15, not, not mm -hmm. uh, like a career job like that. Are you going to mm -hmm. put it in the resume or are you not going to put it? Uh, so that will be on individual basis, right? So for us, for our students, uh, we have a template. So first, like we used to do it individually, uh, we still do, but mostly once you are done, we'll help you. Uh, you are going to use a template to uh, make your resume and send it to us. And then we will look, look at it and uh, talk to you and maybe do some changes to it based on what you've done and the skill sets that you are bringing to the table. So. Like that is not a really, like it's not general. Uh, we look at it based on individual basis, right? Because whatever job that you are doing that you think is not a career job, maybe there are some skill sets that we can, you know, bring uh, that like we can highlight that is going to make you look good for that job. Okay, thank you. I'll okay. Uh, Nafi, go ahead. Yes, I'm headed for the program. Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Adu? Yes. So I have a quick question. Uh, for the scholarship, you said you're giving away some scholarship. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do we, like, is uh, for everybody, like, um, or is for, like, what do we need to do to apply for the scholarship? No, so you don't have to apply. Uh, next week, just like this, when we do cyber chats, Okay. Uh, people who show up for the cyber chats, we are just going to pick at random. So it's kind of like a lottery. You'll pick at huh? random if you are the lucky, uh, uh, like if you are selected, uh, then, you know, you'll be awarded uh, one of the scholarships. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yes, you're welcome. So, sorry, Dr. Du, can you say that again about uh, how people can... Uh, you know, get lucky or get enrolled on the program, PCID. Oh, so uh, Nafi was asking about the scholarship, uh, if you have to apply for it. And I was saying uh, next week like this. So today we have, we had a hundred and like 20 or 130 people. I think we are dropping down. Uh, so we are going to pick, right? Uh, randomly, we are going to pick people in cyber chats and give them the scholarships. So you don't have to apply. Right, so I was saying, if you are lucky and you are picked, uh, just like what we did in October, uh, then you know uh, we will give you the scholarships. But you don't have to do anything; you just have to show up to Cyber Chat next week. Oh wow! Just okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Eliku, go ahead. Um. Uh, good evening. Yeah. Good evening, Eliku. 
Yeah, so uh, my question was just a follow up to the one who asked about uh, career change. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, I, okay, I, I think I'm one of those who are trying to change from one aspect of IT into uh, PCI DSS. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have found it a little bit challenging to have my resume be like, um how can i say <laughs> like to to be uniform so i it's like i have all these uh dba and qa and web logic and then suddenly cyber security so i mm -hmm. i feel like it's a little hard it's a little choppy and how can we make it like flow okay so uh for Eliko, you are in the PCI class. For our students, uh, we work with you on that, right? To make it very seamless. So there shouldn't be an issue. But for everybody else, what I'll say is, uh, you're, you, you've you done way more than you have on your resume. So resume, we that is why you have to tailor resume, right? So if you used to be a pilot and then you switch to be a nurse, and then you switch to be uh, a helicopter mechanic, and now you're a cyber security professional, you are not gonna put all of it on there, right? Uh, and go into details of exactly what you did in all these roles. But if we are looking at you know, transferable skills, there are a lot of transferable skills that you can pick from all of these roles and you know, put it all uh, on there to make you like, to show that you have the skill set that we need for the role that you are applying for now, right? So uh depending on what role you are applying for we will go through what you've done and you know pick the ones that will apply in terms of transferable skills and then the ones that wouldn't apply we don't necessarily have to talk about it, right and, and then just another follow-up um so uh how there are different forms of resumes and i was playing with maybe using a functional resume versus a chronological resume to present as a cybersecurity um, uh, applicant, job applicant. Uh, could you speak to that? Yeah, so for, uh, I'll still just go back to it. So for your resume, we are going to make that for you. So you don't have to, all you have to do is give us what you have and we are going to turn around and make one for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, okay, so it's going to be uh, Kobe and then Abu and uh, DJ. Uh, hello, thank you, yes. Doc. Uh, my question is, um, when we, you were talking, you said something about uh, going to workshops in other places. I wanted to know how can you know that there is a workshop going on somewhere so that you will join to get okay. involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for for webinars, right? Uh, go to everybody can take this down. Bright talk, bright like bright bright light, bright talk. Uh, they host a lot of webinars and uh, they host some good cybersecurity webinars on there as well, right? They have like an hour two hours, they have like a whole list. So Bright Talk uh, is one place that you can get a lot of these webinars, right? And then Arrhythmia Cyber uh, Chats is where you also get some good info. But Bright Talk, they have like a variety of talks over there from different companies and different uh, players in the industry. So everybody should, you know, take note of that. Bright Talk, I think it's brighttalk.com, right? Okay, okay, Bright Talk, like people, Feel like Thomas or like Orange? Feel like Paul? Uh, I think like we, we brighten are the corner. A light brighten. Yes, bright. Oh, okay. And then bright talk, talk like Porton. Bright. Okay, bright talk. C A L K. Yes. So it is in the chat. Yes. Thank you, uh, Alex. Um, so, uh, yes. So, uh, like that is a place that you can 
uh, get, I mean, there is a whole list of recorded ones and then live ones. You can also register for those ones as well. Right. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yes, you're welcome. All right. And uh, uh, Abu, go ahead. Um, yes, but thank you so much for your time sharing with us. It's very um, informative. Oh, please unmute yourself, Abu. I think other folks were. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, I can um, hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying thank you so much for giving me this time to listen to a very informative um, session. And um, and I think hopefully everybody get <clears throat> a lot of information from it. My question was, um, I think I talked to you last week briefly about getting mm -hmm. into um, the entry level uh, position. And I think mm -hmm. um, it was more, not, I'm taking online the classes, but also the amount of time that's required uh, for somebody who's not in there in terms of on a weekly basis to catch up on it, to week, like if I say, let's say, you know, we take the class online, how many hours would you think for the entry level that I should dedicate every week and how long it would take to finish? That's number one. Um, the second question would be for that also, for the entry level um, positions that you have for people who finish entry level, what is the rate of employment and how long does it take to get a job for the rate of employment for people who finish entry level program? Okay, uh, I'll start with that last question. So sure. uh, on average, two to four months, right, uh, to get a job. That is if you are doing what you are supposed to be doing uh, in our job placement assistant course. So we have like a strategy, uh, get a job in, and uh, is it, I think 60 days or less yeah, is what we have. And we have, you know, like how many jobs you should apply and how you should apply for those and stuff like that. So, but on average, uh, two to four months uh, is a good space. I mean, obviously it takes some people longer than uh, four or five months. It takes some people less than the four months. So, but on average, sweet spot uh, after the course, you know, two to four months ish is where we are looking at. Now, for uh, studies, uh, for entry level, uh, if you dedicate at least uh, an hour to, you know, two to three hours a day, I think you should be able to finish in the three months uh, time frame, right? So, uh, that will be, you know, uh, my advice. Yeah, at least if you do two to three hours and some folks on here who took it uh, and are done might be able to also speak to their strategy and you know like what they used uh, so hopefully that helps Abu. but on average it should take you three months to finish the course and then we do the internship for two months all right thank you so much and also the, the, the so also the, the entry level would lead you to uh, not not necessarily the secretary plus but the the, the foundation to be able to take the security, security plus classes if I wanted to, right? Yeah, yeah, the entry level covers way more than you need for security plus. Way more, okay. All right, that's what I want to yeah, ask. The, the goal for the entry level is what are you going to do on the job? Okay. Right. Passing security plus is, is not going to necessarily uh, let you be able to do your job, on like on the job, right? So uh, the intent behind uh, is to chase the knowledge and skill that you need to be able to function on the job. And if you do that, uh, it's easy for you to pass any certification exam because you have the knowledge and skill, right? But if you chase right. certification, you are chasing it just to pass it. And now when you pass it, uh, you don't have the skill to be able to actually execute, you know, maybe yes. some of the content that you know. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yes, thank you so much for answering that. You're welcome. Uh, DG, go ahead. Um, can hey, you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, not, not DJ. I think it's uh, DJ. Maybe, probably, if I'm the one getting the call. Not DJ. Oh, okay. Yes, sorry. Then I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks, Doc, uh, for the fantastic um, work you're doing. My question is, why would you know want to? Why would I want to apply for a PCI DSS? compliance job when organizations can hire someone with vast and other compliance areas, you know, like EPA, PCI, and the rest of, you know, other standards like that. Is mm -hmm. applying directly for a PCI or just tailoring my resume for only PCI job, would that not limit my chances of getting other cyber roles? I understand that I, I, I could specialize or, you know, um, but 
trying to get the first job in cybersecurity is not just better to generalize and you know open yourself up to more options. Thank you. Yeah. So, so PCI uh, is not necessarily for like for you to break into the industry, right? So mostly for our PCI uh, classes, we advise that if you don't have any uh, security or uh, IT background. Uh, you go through the entry level first, get a job, and then you can cycle around and come back and do PCI, right? So uh, to speak to your point, mostly with no IT background, no cybersecurity background, or uh, if you've not, you know, so no IT background, no cybersecurity background, uh, specifically referring to people who've not done any sort of cybersecurity or IT training or anything of that sort. They are just coming from maybe accounting. They just want to jump into uh, cybersecurity. Now for those folks, it is not good for you to say, I'm going to specialize in anything. So, oh, I just want to get into PCI because it's not technical or get into HIPAA or get into RMF because it's the easy way into it. It is not because uh, those are specialized areas that you need to have a good foundation uh, in security before you'll be able to really understand and be effective in those areas, right? But if you, are, if you want to break into the industry, like you just rightly said, uh, you should be able to, if, if you get a good foundation, you should be able to apply for any entry-level role, right? Without limiting yourself to, you know, one area or the other. So that is why mostly for folks who just go do RMF with no background, trying to get into RMF and then try to get a job, they run into a lot of issues because one, RMF applies only to the government side and two, the corporate side don't really care about RMF. And when you go to the corporate side, now you run into a lot of things that you have no clue what they are talking about over there, right? So uh, it is good for you to, if you are starting off, uh, to have a good foundation and to be able to work in any role, you know. Uh, for us, with our entry level, the only role that you wouldn't be able to function in is pen tester or uh, ethical hacker or penetration tester, right? So, but for everything else on the blue side, yes, of course, you should be able to, you know, do it with what we've given you. Right, so yes, yeah, you are right, uh, Deji, on that one. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, Adrian and then Vincent. Uh, thank you, and sorry, I, I, I think I lost connection. I thought you were the one who who had lost it, but I realized it was me. So I could oh, sound I, like I also went offline. Oh, okay. So I just initially wanted to thank you very much for this presentation actually most of us technical people think that it's only those technical sessions that we have with you that are, are important but this session turns out to be if not more just as important because this is really where we fail most of us no matter how good you are technically and this really brings things together so i like there you have uh, made this presentation because you've touched many areas where we could be weak and areas that could really help us. So for those uh, uh, folks who are just joining in the chat and they've not been uh, students here at Aretmis, I think you need to be aware of people who don't have certifications who tell you that you don't need a certification. And you need to, be, to really be scared of people who don't have education that tell you that education doesn't matter. Now here is a man who has both or has actually excelled in both sides and is telling you it doesn't matter. So there is a lot that he knows about what then matters. So if you want to, to go out and continue searching, fine, it's good. But I think I just wanted to point that out because uh, having sat in Dr. Du's classes and the approach he takes that almost sometimes makes uh, assignments look difficult but I also, I also realized that that is about the most difficult time you can ever have with that assignment. On the job, you would have chewed it over and over and it should be easier, which is really the skills that we all need. So thank you, Dr. Du. I think uh, I like the presentation as, as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, Vincent. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you can hear you. Okay, um, let me, I crave your indulgence to just make this brief comment for people like me who are like coming out from another industry and you're going into cybersecurity. I like to always share what has worked for me with people. The key to it, as Dr. Edu said, 
while all those certifications are important, while you can self-study, it's also very important to get the experience. And you can also get the experience by what we're doing right now and rolling in all this training. But I always tell people, practice. Like most of all these things you do on the job are things you can do on your own. Like if you have mm -hmm. a desktop at home, download a VMware, put virtual machines on it, start practicing, download Qualix, do vulnerability scans. So that when you put those things on your resume, if you, even though you're coming from another industry, you won't feel guilty. You, you're, not, you, you're not lying when you say, hey, I've done vulnerability scans before and I've resolved the issue. If you tell someone, hey, I use Nexus and it pointed out this vulnerability and I went down into the Windows log and I closed all these ports that he said was open and all that and it fixed and I did another scan and it came out clean. You've just fixed an issue right there. That's your experience right there. Do you know how to ping your own IP address? How many O's do you have at home? Do you know how to do all those leads? A lot of those tools, what I've learned, I'm talking personally, because a lot of those tools are free. If you have time to devote yourself to it and you follow everything, I'm in PCI because I already have Security Plus and you follow everything Dr. Adu is teaching. I think it works because I've seen people who went through this program. I've heard them talk and I'm like, okay, if you just follow the process and you just trust the process and you don't have to feel guilty about saying things you really can do, everybody has a way to finesse their resume. If I tell you, as long as I can do it, you know, if you go make up a company or whatever, but you know you have the skills, definitely you will get. I've gotten offers. I've gotten to go for interviews, but I won't leave what I have just because I want to get into cybersecurity. I won't take less than I'm making now. That's the only problem why I've not gone full throttle into cybersecurity. So that's just a comment. It's very important to practice those things. And they are very easy if you just have the right guidance and, you know, download these tools, practice every day, you, you'll definitely get it. It might take a while, but you will get it. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, yes, and like I said, uh, we do three main things uh, in the Army if you have to go do anything. Uh, the first thing is to practice. The second thing is to practice. Uh, the third one is to practice, right? So uh, you hit it right uh, on the head, Vincent. I mean, we cannot stress on that enough for everything that you're doing in security. And also, uh, Vincent talked about uh, the imposter syndrome. So thinking, uh, you know, you are not, uh, you know, you are an outsider trying to, no, it, it doesn't, everybody gets that, right? Uh, everybody gets that. But because everybody, like at, at every point in time, even if you've been in the industry for 20 years, you're still thinking, ah, am I good enough, right? We all have that little self-doubt. But uh, what Vincent, is talking about is what is going to help you to really overcome that, you know, uh, psychological aspect of uh, your own, you know, uh, self by practicing and using the tools. Because uh, if you are speaking to something that you've not done, right, you are kind of on the edge. But if it's something you've done, you know, you are very confident about it. Uh, okay, what is your experience using Nexus? Oh, yeah. So my experience was, and for you, you would have more experience than somebody who's actually used Nexus for 10 years. And why is that? Because on the job, you are not going to be the one installing and configuring Nexus. It is already going to be installed and ready to use. But you who is practicing at home, you have to figure out how to you know, install it. It's not working, going back and forth, <laughs> trying to get it to work. And now you will learn how to use it. So you can do the configuration, installation, and everything. Uh, somebody who's been using it for 15 years probably just know it's there, you know, spin it up on their desktop, and then that's it. So you know more than them even, right, going into it. So, yes, thank you for that uh, uh, comment, Vincent. Linda, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Adu. Um, I just want to know when the next internship class is going to start. I thought I was I would be able to join the March 25th, but I took this week off to go through the materials. And there's a lot of information, very good information that mm -hmm. I need time to absorb them. So I will not be able to join the three join. class. So when okay. the, the next one will start in May. Okay. Uh, tentatively May. first week of May, yes. 
Thank you. So this internship is starting tomorrow. Uh, is the new interns are starting tomorrow. They will join the old interns that kind of do a handover, right? But the old interns, they still have like a week and a half to go, uh, two weeks to go. So, but you know, they are kind of passing the baton to them. So uh, it's going to be pretty fun tomorrow. Uh, TG, go ahead. Is that me, Tijuana? Yes, Tijuana. Okay. So um, I have NIST 853 and 171 policy experience mm -hmm. and um, work with Raytheon a bit. But I okay. want to get into the PCI side mm -hmm. and I want to actually get to the audit level experience. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure which of the some uh, which of the PCI uh, offerings. The expert. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so I think those are uh, all our questions. In the list. Sorry, sorry, Doctor Adu. Just one yes, more question. This, this is Ike uh, Ikenna. Um, oh, go ahead, I, Ike. Want, I just want to ask tomorrow. What mm -hmm. time is the um, start tomorrow for the uh, internship tomorrow? Uh, is 10, 10 a.m. Eastern. Okay, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, is yeah. it going to run for two hours or three hours? No, for two hours. For two hours, that's 10 to 12. Yeah, 10 to 12, uh, noon Eastern. Okay, thank you. Yes, you, you're welcome. A quick right. question. Uh, George, yes, go ahead, George. Yes, so I just wanted to find out, is the internship for the uh, security part or the PC, PCI DSS? Or if it's... No, so like this internship is for the uh, cybersecurity uh, entry level course folks and other folks who are taking it as a workshop. For PCI, you are following a different path. When you get to your internship, uh, we will do your internship. Okay, got it, okay. Yes, so you are not missing anything. Like we are not, you know, uh, doing something that you are not aware of, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, 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 um, uh, uh, Dr. Adu. Go ahead, Ike. Yeah, just, just one more thing. Uh, so Linda just said something like uh, materials uh, she's been, she been going through. Is there like materials uh, someone need to assess to be studying? Because I didn't have no material yet. Oh, okay. So all that was posted uh, on the Google Classroom site. So uh, just shoot us an email uh, on the site and uh, we will send you the link. If I think it was sent out already. Uh, but if you didn't get it, then we are going to send it out again. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, okay, I think there is some. Um, this is DJ. <laughs> yes, go ahead, DJ. Yes. Um, first of all, I want to thank you very much for uh, such an informative presentation. Um, secondly, I want to apologize for my name because I just jumped in like that. Because I, <laughs> okay, came that's in, right. I came in not mm -hmm. in a hurry, but my name mm -hmm. is Emmanuel Asso. I live in okay. Germany. Okay, I Emmanuel. already work in security, but not uh, cyber security. Okay. It's, um, an elder, my elder sister who lives in Virginia, um, who told me about the course, and I'm really excited to get into it because I, I have other you know skills. I've never really worked in IT or anyway, but I, <clears throat> I kind of have many hobbies that have things to do with uh, like software issues you're talking about and uh, a couple of things that I've heard. Uh, next thing, uh, when uh, for us who might not be lucky enough to, to get sponsored next week, um, when does the next course start for entry level PCI DSS? <clears throat> so the entry level is not the PCI, the uh, entry level you can start at any time. Right, PCI, you can also start at any time, but the live sessions uh, starts uh, every month and a half. So the next live session is going to start in April, tentatively April 18 for PCI. But for you, I, I, I know you are talking about entry level. For the entry level, you can start at any time. Okay, okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dai. I think that's, that'll, that'll do it for now. All right, thank you. So uh, we're going through the chats real quick. Uh, I think everything in here was for uh, 
describe the entry level curriculum and cost. Okay, so uh, entry level curriculum and cost uh, that can be posted in the okay. oh, on, on the website. Uh, if you go to the website, I mean, like the curriculum is there, right? I if you go to the website. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, George. Um, I just want to thank you for changing my life. That's all I want to say. Awesome. I'm always following your, even though we are about to finish the internship. I'm just so grateful for everything. And I want to encourage everybody to do it. Like I said, uh, like you said, it's possible to do it. I was a nurse and now I'm in cybersecurity. So it's doable. And I want to encourage everybody that um, they should put their time, energy, and money into it. It's not easy, but it's very doable and it will change your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. Uh, so I think for in the chat, uh, we folks takes every entry. Okay, my intern. Yeah. So uh, for Samuel, uh, if you the entry level course covers job placement and resume and all that, uh, job placement assistant resume and uh, for it, it also covers the internship. Okay. So April and some some of the tools. That Vincent talked about, he posted in there. Uh, yes, uh, Deji was also talking about uh, try, try hack me. So uh, for folks who might be interested in uh, ethical hacking, that is a good starting uh, place. Try hack me is a good starting place. And for uh, someone who was asking about the entry level course curriculum. Uh, on, our, on our website, if you go there and you select the entry-level course, uh, at the bottom of it, you see the curriculum. So everything, you can even preview some of the lessons on there as well. Uh, yes. So I think that is all the questions that we had. And uh, only, okay, so George was from the last. So I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, this is the Rhythm Cyber Chat. We do this every Friday night, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we thank you for uh, supporting the Rhythm uh, next week, we will be giving out uh, some sponsorship for four uh, courses. So it will be two in the PCI side and then one uh, with the PCI, uh, with the Cyber Security and Pre-Level course. So, you know, uh, show up. Uh, maybe you're going to be the lucky one to win it. And uh, for folks who already, if you win it and you're already in the course, uh, then if you maybe probably you want to do like a follow-up or uh, you want uh, some other course, then we are going to uh, uh still give you the chance to enroll in other uh, courses with that right so we appreciate everybody's time have a great weekend for our interns uh tomorrow we are meeting 10 a.m eastern all that information will still be pushed out to everybody and for folks who join a bit late our income sharing agreement program is out uh, we sent out the information so you can go ahead and enroll in that if you're interested you can also share uh, with family and friends who might be interested and also spread the word uh, on Friday nights, your family and friends uh, and people that you think will need this information will be able to join us. So we appreciate everybody's time. Have a great weekend. And uh, we will meet again next week, God willing, on Friday night for another cyber chat. Thank you. Good night, guys. <laughs>